Hey guys, Peter Konstantilakis here with Advanced Thermal Solutions. Uh, today we're going to talk about multi-layer heat sinks and electronics cooling. On my left here, you can see a multi-layer heat sink, which has uh, many channels and many layers. Uh, on, the, uh, on the left here, you can see uh, a single layer heat sink, which is more of a traditional heat sink uh, with just your standard fins uh, and just one row of channels versus many rows of channels. Uh, so today we'll talk about three different uh, scaling principles, pore diameter, uh, porosity, and amount of layers. Uh, these three parameters, when varied, uh, uh, get you different results uh, and uh, different thermal resistance and different pressure drop result. Okay, now we're going to talk about our three scaling principles. Uh, we have pore diameter. In each row, uh, the channel volume stays constant, but the pore diameter changes. Uh, so for each row, there could be, say, uh, say if you're going to decrease the pore diameter, there could be four channels taking up the space of one, uh, and that's if you're decreasing the, the diameter, just to give an example. Okay, and our second scaling principle is porosity. Now with porosity, the pore diameter stays the same for each channel, but as you increase or decrease from the heated surface, uh, your channel volume changes. So, let's get that down. So again, channel volume changes per row. The third scaling principle that we'll talk about is the amount of layers. So this, this uh, tends to be a bit more obvious. Uh, the more layers you have, uh, the lower the thermal resistance becomes, as well as pressure drop. So we can write that. So research has been done on these three scaling properties. Uh, for pore diameter, as uh, the pore diameter, uh, diameter increases and in each successive layer from the heated surface, uh, you, we find that the thermal resistance decreases, which is of course good for, uh, for performance, and pressure drop increases. This same characteristic is found in uh, the, you know, today's traditional heat sinks, so I think we can strive for a little bit better results. Porosity, we find that uh, actually the thermal resistance decreases as well as pressure drop. And to see this uh, reaction in the heat sink, uh, as you, uh, in each successive layer going up from the heated surface, uh, we actually have to increase the channel volume uh, in each layer going up. Now for layer amount, this is just your standard, uh, sort of a standard parameter. These are more fine tuning the heat sink, uh, but for layer amount, of course, uh, as you increase, as you add layers, uh, your thermal resistance drops and your pressure drop drops as well. So we'll now explain the physics behind porosity and layer amount and why this helps to increase performance by twofold, uh, being that thermal resistance and pressure drop, drop uh, decrease. So for porosity, for the thermal resistance, uh, when you increase the amount of uh, channel volume from successive layers going away from the heated surface, uh, you actually increase the mass flow and advection uh, heat transfer in the heat sink. And this, uh, this uh, helps to work against conduction, uh, where conduction actually increases as well uh, going through the heat sink uh, away from the heated surface. So the conduction uh, resistance up at the top of the heat sink is of course uh, much greater than the resistance at the bottom of the heat sink right where the uh, heat source is. And also the pressure drop for porosity uh, decreases uh, because of an increase in flow surface area uh, and this is of course favorable for heat transfer. Uh, so layer amount, uh, the reason why, uh, or the reason behind thermal resistance decreasing uh, simply because the amount of coolant channels increases 
uh, and this effectively increases surface area uh, and thus heat transfer. Uh, and same goes for the pressure draw. The more coolant channels, uh, the, the less restriction there is and the more free flowing the heat sink is.